now, there are some issues about how people design buildings. Um, this slide is a sort of crazy kind of um, idea of a, of a building, and there is a, a couple of characters, one of whom is obviously visually impaired and, and is also using a, a stick. And talking to a kind of cartoon architect, this is a, a slide um, of a cartoon by Louis Hellman. Some of you may know him. He's a brilliant cartoonist, I think. And of course, he is exaggerating the whole thing. Ridiculous pattern, a, a completely open tread staircase. And yet, I have known this sort of thing happening, perhaps not quite so extremely. But I do remember um, a number of open tread staircases that were actually made of glass and really difficult to negotiate. And if you look around, you do see crazy things. Again, this is another Louis Hellman cartoon with sort of a mad mobile lamp ramp being pro provided from a historic building. Um, but then when you start looking around, you do actually see sort of things that aren't that dissimilar, you know, the kind of ridiculously steep ramp without any kind of um, a support. So you'd be quite scared if you were going up that. Um, and then there's this one here, which I think is even more amusing, um, if it wasn't a bit sad. And it's a building that is a wedding venue. Um, I took this slide only last year, it's a recent one. And I had this sort of mental picture of the bride, a wheelchair user, descending the ramp. And I thought, wow, she'd be going at quite a lick by the time she got to the bottom. And her husband would be saying, hey, you know, wait for me. Um, and actually, this has been put there with an expectation it could be used. And if you look at the steps along the side, you notice how very poorly maintained they are. So this is a wedding <coughs> venue that costs an awful lot of money to go there to have a wedding, why do they multiply everything by 20 or something, or maybe more, if it's to do with the wedding? Anyway, they do. So I would have thought they could have repaired the steps and made them just a little bit safer for everybody. Because one of the things that causes more hospital admissions than anything else is people tripping and falling, particularly down steps. And if you look at the over 65 population, that is a real issue. Um, people falling, because if they do fall, they're more likely to do quite severe damage. Um, a younger person falls, they probably feel a bit of a fall, but they don't necessarily break anything. But an older person may well break a hip or something, which could cause not only costs to the health service in repairing that, but also the ongoing costs of helping that person in their own home. So, my argument is that you should be able to design everything to be inclusive. Now, this is a tale of two potato peelers. <coughs> and it basically is saying this potato peeler um, on the screen at the moment is for right-handed people. And you can only use it if you're right-handed. It doesn't have um, a blade for the left-handed person. And it's also got rather a poor handle. Now, the answer to that is no, it's not acceptable. Because really what you need is a two-bladed potato peeler that can be used by left and right-handers. Now, I happen to have two left-handed sons and two right-handed daughters. Now, can you imagine what would go on in the manly household if the girls had to peel the potatoes and the boys were let off because they couldn't use the potato peeler? there would have been a real crisis. So what I'm saying is here, why not design something that can be used by the maximum number of people? The handle is also a good grips handle, which means that someone with limited um, opportunity to kind of grip as hard as they might wish to can at least have a go at peeling the potatoes. So, you know, everything we design, and I think it really says from products to rooms to buildings to streets to neighbourhoods or even to whole towns or cities should be designed to be as accessible as possible.